hello? Hello, Thomas Jefferson and James Madison? You know, it's not just the First Amendment, those 16 golden words, that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, which, of course, the religious right views as being a myth like Popeye and Paul Bunyan and, um, you know, uh, Bigfoot. In fact, the GOP in Texas, God's own party, the Republicans, and have an official plank in their platform and have had it there for years that they want to, quote, dispel the myth of the separation of church and state. So let's just leave that alone for a second because, you know, the Bill of Rights, which, by the way, was not passed for the convenience of the majority, was, was passed to prevent the tyranny of the majority over the minority specifically, it didn't go into effect until 91, 1791, March of 1791. In 89, December of 1789, the body of the Constitution went into effect. And our founding fathers were so prescient, they were so careful, they looked and they looked at you so carefully, assiduously at European history and realized that most of the tyrannies there had occurred when men of the cloth had been men in political power. They looked at Cromwell in England. They looked, didn't have to look far beyond New England for the Salem witch trials. And they said, not on our watch. So they put into the body of the Constitution, not even in the Bill of Rights, Clause 3, Article 6, which states we will never have a religion test for any position in the federal government. Amazingly prescient. Except, of course, I guess if you're in the U.S. Air Force, when they're going to hold a religious Geiger counter up to you, and if they determine that you're unchurched by whatever test they have, well then, you know, they're going to reserve that right to evangelize you. That's a religion test. But when my kids were being called fucking Jews and being accused repeatedly of total complicity in the execution of Jesus Christ. You know, for a guy born without a temper, and I don't have one, I can pretend if I'm being paid enough to have one. That was enough for me. Elliot Spitzer, the brilliant uh, new governor of New York, is fond of saying that you cannot change the world by whispering. And that's the reason I'm here tonight. I'm not going to talk terribly long. We're going to go into a Q&A and give all of you a chance to ask some questions. I wrote my book, Not to Be a Whisper, the book, one, uh, um, with God on our side, one man's war against an evangelical coup in America's military is meant to be a primal scream. What the hell is it going to take to wake up Homer Simpson America as to what's happening? Now I understand why that poor guy set himself on fire in front of Robert McNamara's office during the Vietnam War in front of the Pentagon. Because I've been sitting around for 42 months. I've been on every TV show you can imagine. Uh, I haven't done O'Reilly or Hannity because, like I said, I really want to be on a real TV show. Uh, uh, Rush Limbaugh jumped into my case a couple of months ago and told the audience that I was a pacifist and a uh, aider and a better to Al-Qaeda, uh, which surprised me because, you know, if it wasn't for, I guess it was an anal cyst that he had, he also would have maybe been able to have been qualified medically to serve in the U.S. military. So, I, you know, I, I, 128 years of combined active duty military service, my nephew just getting back with a chest full of medals as a Marine in Iraq. Um, I guess, I suppose, you know, if you want to believe Rush, that's perfectly fine. But the bottom line here, as I said before, is what is it going to take to wake America up? You know, most Americans think that a great deal of energy, something that's worthwhile to uh, admire, is when someone's willing to spend three chilly nights on an air mattress in front of Circuit City to make sure they get their PlayStation 3. But I can tell you, what do you do when you find a, a, a three-star general who commands 75,000 troops in a military command that controls all of our nuclear weapons, all of our hydrogen and atomic weapons uh, that are on airframes, bombers and fighters, except those that are in the missile silos, when he orders his staff to put together a PowerPoint presentation showing the direct parallel between the Book of Revelations and all of our movements into Crete, Basra, Fallujah, Anbar Province, Sadr City in the northwest part of Baghdad, Tora Bora and throughout Afghanistan. He wants everyone to sign off. It got out to 2,500 people before we were able to get it stopped. What do you do when you have a, another four-star general who's pushing his command, which has 68,000 troops in it, to, to please consider taking a special off-base class at a local mega evangelical church entitled, to put on your Hammer Museum seatbelts, I can't make this stuff up, entitled, Jesus versus Muhammad, an examination of the life of both prophets and why Jesus Christ is superior to all. <laughs> now, I'm speaking tonight in Los Angeles. For those of you in TV land, um, I'm sure most of you know this. All these Los Angelinos know that there's a great rivalry between the UCL, UCLA Bruins and the USC Trojans. I put it to you tonight. What would happen if Pete Carroll, who's the football coach at USC, three days before the big game with UCLA, decided to call the mothers of the, um, UC, the UCLA football players whores 
You think that might stiffen their resolve a little bit? Well, look, what, is it, what, is, what do you think it means to Osama bin Laden, Ayman al-Zawari, Abu Musab al-Zarqari, his dead, but his followers, the insurrectionists, the jihadists, Sheikh Hassan Nasrallah's Hezbollah, Hamas, the, the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigades, Islamic Jihad, when they already see us as invading American imperialists and crusaders, what do you think they think when they find out that we have an attack F-16 fighter squadron whose F-16s are equipped to carry laser-guided conventional and nuclear weapons? It's called the 523rd Crusaders. Their official Air Force logo has a giant crucifix on it, a crusader's helmet from the year 1096, the date of the First Crusade, surrounded by three yellow stars for the Trinity and a giant crusader's broadsword. We brought that to the attention of the Air Force two years ago, and then suddenly that, uh, they've mothballed that squadron. With, uh, they've reserved the right to bring it back at any time. You marry that up with that, you know, we in the U.S. Air Force reserve the right to evangelize anyone we determine to be unchurched. And I ask you, is there anything more, anything, we could possibly be doing to act as an accelerant or lubricant to make it easier for already angry young Islamic men and women in Jordan, Egypt, Syria, Lebanon to want to come and join the fight against us? How counterintuitive is this? It's like calling the UCLA Bruins mothers, the football players mothers, whores. It's stupid beyond belief. You can say whatever you want about Cindy Sheehan and make fun of her. She lost her son named Casey in the war. I have a son named Casey. I have a daughter-in-law, his wife named Amanda, and another son named Curtis. They're all lieutenants in the Air Force. How many members of the U.S. Congress, besides Senator Jim Webb, have anybody who's over there? Where are those Bush twins? Why aren't they doing any public service? This year in October, I think about 10 days after I uh, appear as the main interview in Hustler magazine, don't laugh because they just did, 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 just did Dil Moy uh, Bill Moyers this month, and they're doing Michael Moore the month after. I'm after that. I'm going to celebrate uh, at the Air Force Academy the 30th reunion of my class. Now, let me tell you, I'm sure that my wife and I will stick out like a uh, tarantula on a wedding cake there, but it'll be pretty interesting. You know, I want to take you into the mindset, and then uh, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll probably close and go to the Q&A, of the kind of people that we're fighting. They have every right to have their belief system. And please understand what's happened in this country, very slowly but very deliberately. In 1970, we only had 10, only 10 of them. M being mega evangelical churches, with a mega evangelical church being operationally defined as 2,000 or more evangelical congregants. But after 9-11, with this idiot in the White House, a new mega evangelical church has opened up in our country every 48 hours. Now, you live in a blue state. You live in Los Angeles. Congratulations. But a lot of people watching in TV land don't. That's their right. If I'm at a movie, if I'm walking through a mall, if I'm at a state fair, if I'm in a restaurant, if I'm in my own home, out in the front yard, I'm fair game to be evangelized. That's perfectly fine. That's part of America, the dynam dynamism of being America. And we have tolerance for diversity in this country, the three most beautiful words that are woven into the very fabric of Americana. What I blame the religious right for as a felony against democracy and a blood libel is that they take those three beautiful words, tolerance for diversity, and they bludgeon them, they rape them, they assault them, they, they, de they destroy them. The same concept of e pluribus unum, so that out of their mouths, what you hear is intolerance for those in the, major in the, in the majority. They've called me Satan, Satan's lawyer, the dead guy, Jerry Falwell, and I'm sorry, I'm very glad he's dead. I'm very sorry if anyone's upset about that. He was a bad, bad man in, with regard to the Constitution. And I'm not going to sit here and say some nice little platitudes about it. The other guy that uh, had a long history of fighting with, Ted Haggard, who of course has had a sudden career change. Um, the D. James Kennedys of the world, uh, Dr. Uh, 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 Dobson, with focus on the fascists in Colorado Springs, um, and, uh, and of course my good friend Pat Robertson, Robertson uh, and all these people deny it. I know they've called me the most dangerous man in America, and then about 55 or 56 weeks ago they came out with a new name. I don't know how much they pay their PR people. I know how much we pay ours. She's here tonight. But the new name, that I guess they started uh, putting my picture up on the jumbotrons on Sundays around America at a lot of these mega evangelical churches, mostly in the southeast from what I understand, where I can't defend myself or my family can't defend ourselves. And uh, 